Next, we would like to present an explainability case study that we have performed on understanding machine learning models that are utilized to rank candidates recommended by LinkedIn Talent Search. This is a joint work with Varun and Girish. First, let's give a brief introduction to LinkedIn Talent Search, with LinkedIn Recruiter being the flagship product for it. This is an enterprise search and recommendation system for recruiters and hiring managers to find the most suitable candidates for the positions that they have an opening for. Based on the query entered by the recruiter using standardized and free search criteria, the search system retrieves candidates and ranks them in multiple levels using machine learning models. Three main approaches that have been utilized for ranking candidates within the recruiter product are as follows. The first one is a pairwise gradient boosted decision trees. Next, we have generalized linear mix models that understand explicit personalization along recruiter dimension. And finally, and more recently, we have deep neural nets. The main optimization criteria for the models that are trained is to increase in-mail accepts. In-mail accept is basically when a recruiter sends an email to the candidate and the candidate responds to this email in a positive manner. Such a uh, optimization criteria actually models the mutual interest between the candidate and the opportunity. To understand and explain gradient boosted decision trees, we have previously used feature importance values. This gives us a global view of the frequency of features used for ranking candidates. Such feature importances can be used to understand the digression of features between models. For example, we could understand how a previously important feature is no longer being used or even with more importance being used in a new model. We could see if there might be a bug in generating this feature and tracking of this feature. Furthermore, we utilize these importance values to select and potentially eliminate features if we, int we are introducing them to the model in bulk. For example, if we have a very costly feature that is not utilized by the model as given by the feature importances, we might actually decide to completely remove that feature from being even generated online. Finally, feature importance values can help separate the factors that cause an improvement in modeling. For example, we could understand whether a metric lift is coming from the feature or a new data source or labeling strategy. One shortcoming for feature importances is that they only give a global view of the model. Hence, are in general not as useful in understanding the ranking for a specific singular search instance. Without going into too much detail here, we would like to introduce generalized linear mixed models, and they are inherently interpretable, since once we know the entity that we are trying to rank candidates for, such a model amounts to a linear uh, case. On the other hand, the model has a single set of global weights, but a separate set of weights for every entity in the system. In our case, entities are recruiter IDs and contracts. And these contracts can be interpreted as a group of recruiters. Of course, a separate set of weights are only trained for GM mix models if there is sufficient usage data for that entity. Next, we would like to give an understanding of how we attempted to interpret and explain deep neural network-based ranking models. For this purpose, we are utilizing integrated gradients method, which we also described in detail in an earlier video. One thing that is of great importance for us is the determination of baseline example. Every query creates its own baseline example for our purposes, since there are significant differences in terms of query specific features. For example, these could be query match features, time-based features, as well as recruiter and candidate affinity features, which would be different for each and every query instance. Therefore, 
there is no globally neutral example for comparison, which is required by the integrated gradients method. This also means that we need to choose a different baseline example for each query after ranking and compare it to the other ranked candidates to this baseline in a query by query manner. For example, how, how we choose this baseline could be in many ways, but it could be the last ranked candidate or a random candidate. It could also be a request from the user of the system in the form of a question such as, why was candidate X? ranked about candidate Y in my recommendations. Using such a method, we can attribute the score difference between two candidates to multiple features. And this attribution could be positive, which would mean a feature helped the candidate be ranked higher, or it could be a negative, which means the feature could pot potentially cause or could have caused the candidate to be ranked lower. Here we give an other example um, where we had to obscure the feature names. But this shows the contribution of different features, description of features, as well as how the feature was differing between the first and the second candidate. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages of such an approach? First of all, Integrated gradients can explain very complex models in terms of neural nets with several layers and complex interactions between features. Furthermore, it allows for a case-by-case -case analysis and could answer several questions by the user of the system. Some of these questions, as we listed here, are, for example, why do you think candidate X is a better match for the position that I have open? So another one could be why I am a better fit for the job. This is for a different application, but these are some of the questions that can be answered by a case-by-case -case analysis or something like, why am I being shown this ad? And this kind of a case-by-case -case analysis is really advantageous in debugging real-time problems in production. On the other hand, a con of case-by-case -case analysis is that a global view on the model is missing. And for the grade, integrated gradients case, such a global view, view could be quite costly to compute. Finally, let's list some lessons learned and potential future work. First of all, it is obvious that there are pros and cons trade-off between global explanation and case-by-case -case explanations. For example, modeling decisions could probably be easier to arrive at via global explanations, while case-by-case -case explanations are probably more intuitive for the non-technical users and potentially more useful to debug models. For the neural net approach, integrated gradients worked well for us and gave intuitive results where we could clearly see the relation between the utilized features and the goals that we are trying to optimize. A next step for us would be to towards understanding and preparing global explanations for deep models, which is currently missing from a case-by-case -case explainable to approach that we applied. This concludes our case study, and thanks a lot for listening.